Thanks very much to the organizers for including me on the program. This is joint work with Marcus Stillender, who just moved to University of Illinois Chicago. Uh, great. OK, so sort of the popular, how most people think about technological change, they're really worried about what's going to happen to their jobs, right? What's going to happen to employment? What's going to happen to wages? This is something that's relatively hard to get at, at a in a causal way. Um, and in a recent paper from Asimo and Restrepo, they find that, yes, maybe we should be worried, right? So they're looking at the impact of industrial robots. And here they see that led to a causal decrease in employment and, and in, in wages, right? Um, so the industrial robots are a very specific setting where they're focused on it really repl completely replaces these manufacturing jobs. And we want to think about other types of technological change um, that are maybe a little bit broader. So thinking about technology that's operated by workers within their jobs. Okay? So uh, when you're working with the people that are working with the technology within their jobs, this may end up being uh, factor augmenting, so it may increase their productivity, but it also is going to be replacing some of the tasks that they're performing. Um, and so what we're interested in understanding is what are the labor market effects of factor augmenting technological change. Our specific setting is we're going to be looking at burning glass data, so this is job postings data. We have 120 million online job postings, and we're going to focus on office support workers. So these are the types of jobs that are traditionally thought of as these white collar routine jobs, jobs that we think that are very likely to be affected by technological change and replaced, potentially replaced by technology. Um, and in order to measure uh, technological adoption, we're going to look at the number of software that's listed in these job ads. And we'll focus on two different research questions. So the first research question is just really a correlation and trying to understand uh, how does computerization relate to changes in labor demand within firms. So we can look at this sort of in the cross section. So we can look at how these occupations are changing, both in terms of skill requirements and also the tasks performed in these jobs. We're also going to be able to look within job postings, within job title and firm, and say how within the firm are these jobs changing. The second part of the paper is we're going to try to look at what are the aggregate effects of this. And so we'll use um, a Bartik style instrument to be able to look at what are the local, local labor market effects of this technological change. So why are we looking at office and administrative supports? Well, this graph shows the OAS percent of employment and how it's changed over time. Okay? Um, so you have a big increase up until 1980. 1980, something dramatic changed. right? So we started seeing computers being used in, in these jobs. And we have this precipitous decline in the employment share of office and administrative support workers. Now, it's still over 12%, which is a larger share than manufacturing. So this is still like a pretty big segment of, of our labor market. But it does seem to be something that's been, been changing changing a lot, and we think it's changing because of, of technology. So this relates to a variety of, of literatures that are well known to this audience. So I'm just going to focus on sort of the two closest related papers. I've already mentioned this Asimoglin Restrepo paper. Uh, there's another recent paper um, by Atale and co-authors that's doing some, something somewhat similar, where they're looking at uh, changes within, within job postings. There they're focusing on newspaper ads. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit about some of the differences uh, uh, a little bit later. So from a theoretical perspective, I don't want to spend too much on this, but this really relates to the task-based uh, theory of technological change. So we're going to be thinking about what are the tasks that are being performed in these occupations. And we can think of the technological change as either being factor augmenting, so this is sort of increasing their productivity um, across tasks, or we can think about it in terms of task replacing. So I'm going to argue that the office, this type of technology that's changing for office administrative support workers has both features. Okay, So we're going to see that it's it's technology that's being performed by these workers. So they're going to be interacting with this technology and using this technology. And it's going to, I'll show that it's going to be making these workers more productive. Um, but it's also task replacing, or it should be task replacing. So we expect that certain routine things that used to be a large part of the job are going to be less, less common. So both of these features are really going to be at play for this type of technological change. Um, and if we think about this model, so kind of based off of the Asimoglu and Otter model, uh, we both, both types of technological uh, change, we expect, will broaden the task space. So for these office and administrative workers, these sort of middle skill workers, we expect that technological change will sort of increase the, the span of tasks that they may be performing um, and encroaching into tasks 
from other occupational groups. Um, but we'll have different predictions about wages, depending on which aspect of the technological change dominates. So uh, if, it's, if the task replacing aspects dominate, we would expect it to reduce office support workers' relative wages. Uh, as a fag factor augmenting aspects dominate, we would expect it to increase the relative wages. So that's something we're going to be able to look at analytically. Okay, so we're using this burning glass uh, data that's coming from online job advertisements. Burning glass is a web scraper, so they scrape uh, over 40,000 online job boards and company websites. One of the things they do is uh, remove duplicate listings, and we'll use their data they have from 2007 and 2010 and 2016. So the structure of the data, so one of the value added of Burning Glass is they process the, the job ad, and so they divide it into phrases. So they'll, you can focus on education requirements, experience requirements, they'll pull these things out, uh, the occupation, and then they basically just have a long list of phrases, uh, uh, which are about 12,000 phrases that are kind of relatively unstructured. Uh, they do do a little bit to kind of regularize these phrases. Uh, and so what we want to do is we want to focus on how to assign these phrases uh, to different, different content of the job. So in order to categorize technology, what we're going to use is the ONET technology taxonomy. And so that is going to provide us a list of all of the technologies that are associated with office administrative supports according to ONET. Um, and then we kind of expand that to all the specific technology names or software names that are associated with in those categories of technology. And then we'll do a fuzzy text match between the burning glass list of skills um, and, and this list from ONET. And so we have 822 matches. So those are the, that's our measure of technology that we're going to be using or the classification of, of technology. And so for the first part of the paper, we're really looking within the firm um, and looking at what is changing within job ads. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use an ad level specification, uh, and we'll include fixed effects. So either in cross-section, we can include month and year and commuting zone fixed effects. Within firm specification, we can actually include a fixed effect for job title by firm. So this allows us to look at specific job ads for the same position within the firm, how those change over time. Uh, and our technology measure is just the number of types of technology that are in these ads. And so just to summarize what we find, there's a lot more information in the paper, but we find that the intensity of technology demand is positively correlated with education requirements and skill requirements. Um, and so this suggests that this is sort of the introduction of technology or the, the use of technology uh, is, is skill biased in the sense that these workers, they're asking for more skill when they're, when they're using, performing these jobs. Um, but more interesting, I think, is maybe to look at the task content of the jobs. So now we can actually say from the job ads, we can say what changes within these jobs as firms are asking for more technology. Um, and uh, right. So again, what we do is we essentially using, using the text from the job ads, we categorize phrases into, into different categories. Um, again, we're focusing on office support jobs. We're focusing on tasks. Uh, that we see in these job ads. Um, so we'll look at manual tasks, sort of typical office support tasks. We'll also look at tasks from specific other white collar functions, so things like legal HR, um, and then higher level tasks and skills, so things like management writing, research, things like that. Okay, and so this is what we see. So again, this is looking within, this is including firm by job ad fixed effect. And so when we see an increase, so when there's more technology being demanded in the job ad, we do see a small decrease in the number of manual tasks. Uh, we don't see much going on on sort of the basic administrative assistant type tasks. So these are kind of the routine tasks that we think um, I expected would be being replaced by technology. We still see these are pretty prevalent in the job ads, and actually we do see an increase. But we also see big increases in these higher skill tasks, so for instance, management and writing. Um, and we also see big increases in sort of changing the scope of the job. So we see that they're adding in tasks from things like accounting and finance, um, some HR tasks, some legal tasks. Um, not so much on, on some of the other dimensions. So it looks like these jobs, sort of as they're asking for more technology, the office support jobs are broadening. So they're sort of moving in to these other high-skilled office jobs and sort of uh, encroaching on the task space from these other high-skilled occupations. And we don't see as much going on in terms of a reduction in tasks for this sort of traditional routine, uh, routine tasks from the job. 
Um, okay, so this is just summarizing the things that I've just said. Um, and so one difference from the Atelier paper is they both find, they do find the upskilling, but they also find a reduction in routine tasks from looking at newspaper ads. And one interesting difference between the online ads and the newspaper ads is space constraint, right? So, you know, you can keep adding things in in the online ads and there's no cost to it, essentially. And so that could be one of the, one of the differences that we see there. Okay, so all of the previous stuff I talked about is really cross-sectional or, or um, you know, looking at correlations within job ads and seeing what's changing at the same time as we see changes in technology. Uh, but we, next what we wanna do is think about trying to get at the causal effect of this technology adoption on the local labor markets. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to aggregate the job posting data to the local labor market level um, and we'll instrument using national variation. Uh, so specifically, so we'll use census data in order to get at employment and wages um, and, and sort of demographic characteristics. Uh, we'll use the same years that we have from the burning glass sample. Um, we'll aggregate to the commuting zone level um, and we'll map from the census MSAs to commuting zones. So our exposure measure, so this is the way that we're going to kind of aggregate this technology measure uh, to the local labor market level, is we'll use the average number of technologies um, within the commuting zone for a particular office administrative support occupation. Um, and then we'll weight each one by the share of local employment in that, in that uh, occupation. So share of office administrative support employment for that occupation. Um, and so uh, this is just showing sort of what's the change in the relationship between the change in this endogenous technology measure uh, and the change in the, op the share of employment in office administrative support. So we see that places that have a bigger increase in technology also have a bigger decrease in OAS, so the office administrative support percent. Now, of course, this, this measure is an endogenous measure, and there's a lot of reasons why we think this might not be a good way of capturing technological change. Uh, so in particular, this decision to adopt technology is going to depend on local wages, education, and employment, so all the things that we want to measure for the outcome variables. Um, negative shocks to the local labor market could induce or inhibit technological adoption, and then also returns to technological adoption may depend on the local labor market uh, in terms of product market competition. So what we're going to do um, to find sources of exogeneity is we'll take care advantage of three things. So the first is that the software is generally going to be available nationally at a national price. Um, the current share of office and administrative support employment is partially going to be related to the historic industry development in the local labor market. So the historical industry mix is going to influence sort of the potential office and administrative support share that we're seeing today. Um, and then we'll also use heterogeneity between these the occupations within the office and administrative support category uh, in terms of how relevant the technology is uh, for changing employment. So we'll use the national technology adoption by occupation to instrument for local technology adoption. Um, and in particular, so we'll use this technology measure, this leave one out technology uh, measure, which is again, the average number of technologies used uh, for a particular occupation. We'll weight it by the uh, industry share back in 2000, and we can also look at a different year. So we also look back in 1970 in the paper, we don't see much difference uh, in our estimates. Um, and then we'll use sort of the nationwide occupation share by industry in order to get us ourselves from industry shares back to occupation shares. Uh, and this is just a graphical representation of the first stage. So we're looking at the change in the instrument from 2007 to 2016, and we see this positive correlation with the change in the endogenous tech measure. Um, and so in uh, table form, uh, this is our first stage. Okay, and so our specification, we're gonna use two stage least squares. We'll use the exposure measure that we just talked about and the instrument measure. Uh, all the estimates we normalize to have mean zero standard deviation one in 2007. So we can think all the estimates I'll show will be, can be interpreted as one standard deviation increase in technology, whole commuting zone and year fixed effects um, and so on. Okay, so first we wanna think about what is the effect on employment outcomes for office support workers specifically. Okay, um, and reassuringly, so we see that a one star deviation increase in technology exposure is associated with uh, a 1% decrease in uh, employment 
uh, one percentage point decrease in employment off as an administrative support employment. Uh, we can also look at it as share of, of the population, so it's about a 0.6 percentage point. Um, and then we can think about, we can look at what's the impact on the share of office support workers with a college degree. So we saw in, within the firm part, we saw that firms were asking for more education when they were also asking for more, more technology. Here we see it looks like they're successful, so we have a higher share of workers with a college degree when there's more uh, technology. When we look at wages, uh, we don't see a lot going on. So, uh, you know, we see a positive point estimate for, uh, again, this is office and administrative support wages, uh, possibly about a 3% uh, increase in wages for college educated, um, but it's not significant, possibly a negative effect for, for non-college educated. So we might be seeing something a little bit going on different for uh, college educated and non-college. Um, but again, this is consistent with what we saw within the firm. Uh, so college share increased, the wages increased for college educated. Uh, and it's consistent with the aggregate trends, right? So we saw overall, we see this big decrease in office administrative support employment. And here we're seeing that that's bigger in places that, that use more technology. Okay, so now we wanna think about, well, what are the spillovers to the rest of the labor market? So first we're gonna look at the employment to population ratio. Uh, and here we find something interesting. So we see that we actually have an increase in, in EPOP. So more places that are using more technology um, have more people employed. Um, and in particular, we see a much bigger effect for, for women, right? So we see a bigger impact on the female EPOP than we do for the male, although they're both increasing. Okay, so this is suggesting that the technology is actually leading to increases in employment. Um, and when we look at wages, so if we look at everybody, uh, we see um, an imprecise, um, uh, not much going on. If we look at per population, we see a positive but not significant point estimate. Uh, but once we start splitting it by non-office administrative support with a college degree and, and without a college degree, here we see more, more going on. So we see about a 2% wage decrease for non-OAS workers with a college degree and a bigger effect for uh, those without a college degree. Um, and so now we can kind of compare it back to the Asimogan Restrepo results, right? And so they found the negative effect on both wages and employment. Uh, we're finding a negative effect on employment, but uh, this positive negative effect on, on wages is positive effect on employment. Um, and so it's different, right? So we have, it's not just the task substituting aspects of technolo technological change, but we also have these factor augmenting aspects. So what we can do is, going back to uh, the, the theory, task substitution predicts that relative wages should be decreasing, factor augmenting predicts that relative wages should be increasing. And so we can compare the ratio of wages for office and administrative support workers with both um, non-college educated, non-OAS workers, and college educated. And both of these we see this positive wage premium, okay? So this is saying that office administrative supports are, wages are increasing relative to both sort of the high end of the labor market and the low end of the labor market. Um, and if we split it out by also breaking uh, the non-college OAS workers, so this is sort of the bottom end of the office administrative support workers, uh, and then the top end, we see an especially large wage premium on the top end. So the uh, college-educated OAS workers' wages are increasing especially compared to college-educated workers. So I, we take this to, to suggest that these factor augmenting aspects of this type of technological change are dominating the task substituting aspects. Um, and this is consistent with the task results that we saw that showed upskilling and also upward task broadening. So these jobs are becoming more skilled. Okay, and then some additional results um, that are in the paper. So reassuringly, places that use more technology, we also see an increase in employment in computer-related occupations. So it's you know, consistent with the story that, that uh, they're using more technology. Um, we do a variety of alternative specifications in the paper with similar results. So 1970 instrument, uh, you can use an instrument that's just based on Microsoft Office that actually uh, gets pretty similar results, um, including a variety of additional contemporaneous controls. Um, and the thing I wanna, last thing I wanna highlight is looking at demographic heterogeneity. So if we split 
uh, workers out by whether or not they're male or female and college educated versus non-college educated, uh, it, it really tells a clear story. So here we have women with a college degree, women with no college, male college, male no college. And so uh, the uh, dark line is, is employment to population ratio. So all of the increase in employment is coming from women with a college degree. If we look at women with no college in both of the male categories, we don't see anything going on in terms of EPOP. So what's going on is this technology is bringing women with a college degree into the labor market and increasing their labor market participation. If we look at wages, we don't see anything. Uh, we have an imprecise zero for women with a college degree. So we're not seeing changes in wages for them. The biggest effect on wages, the biggest negative effect is women without a college degree. So these are women that are getting pushed out of these office administrative support jobs. Uh, and now they're working in other sort of pink collar jobs, service sector, health support, jobs like that for lower pay. But we do also see some negative wage spillovers for men, right? So both college degree and no college degree. One possible explanation for that is um, task competition, right? So these office support jobs are becoming more skilled. We saw that they're adding in tasks from other high-skilled white-collar jobs. Uh, that could be part of what's going on. OK, so to conclude, um, so we investigated the effect of technological change uh, for a large segment of the labor market, these office administrative support jobs, over 12% of, of employment. We see that technological adoption associated with changes in the job become less routine and more skilled. Um, and we find this causal effect on employment for both office support workers as well as these spillovers to the rest of the, of the labor market. Um, and just uh, for the final slide, just thinking a little bit about what does this mean for predictions for the future. So these office support jobs are becoming less routine, so this suggests that they're less at risk, at least from traditional methods of, of technological change that we've seen in the past. So sort of projecting forward, uh, it doesn't look like these jobs will sort of continue to be automated away unless we're talking about different types of, of technological change. 